About four years ago, we were all counted as part of the 2010 Census. Now you may be wondering why you are receiving a form, a phone call, or a visit from the U.S. Census Bureau. What some people may not know is that the Census Bureau is the principal source of data about the country's population, economy, and places every month of every year. The federal agency conducts a variety of surveys that provide information ranging from the unemployment rate to health insurance coverage. So do not be surprised if you see a Census Bureau representative in your neighborhood. Our guest today, Alexandra Barker, Data Dissemination Specialist and Media Relations from the U.S. Census Bureau, will be talking to us about the surveys that they conduct in the Bronx and about their findings about our community. So, thank you for being here today. Oh, thanks for having us. Awesome. So, um, as I, I just said, we did a Census Bureau, like a, a census in 2010, when nobody would expect to see you until 2020. So what, is, what are you guys doing here in the Bronx? Well, we are known to conduct the census every 10 years. That's on the Constitution. We count every person in the nation. So we counted the population of the Bronx in 2010. Mm -hmm. What we are uh, now doing, we do every year, every month of every year, we conduct a variety of surveys. Mm -hmm. Some of the surveys are our own surveys. Some surveys are on behalf of other federal agencies. We are the statistical um, uh, the agents leading out the statistical information for the nation in the, about people, about the economy, and about places. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of this information we collect, it's uh, very important um, so, um, to, to inform decisions that will prov um, help provide services for the community or even infrastructure such as where to build a hospital, do we need to change the way we do transportation here, do we need more schools. Mm -hmm. So the information um, has to be up to date, that's why we collect um, data every month and release most of our results every year. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the surveys, um, you receive calls, some of them we receive a visit from the Census Bureau, so there's a lot going on in the Bronx right now. Gotcha. Uh, what kind of surveys do you conduct in the Bronx? Uh, right now we have seven uh, permanent surveys. Mm -hmm. So every month we're going to have our staff, our field representatives visiting households in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, uh, like the American Community Survey, um, we visit uh, random selected households and we collect information on their socioeconomic um, um, housing information and demographic information. Mm -hmm. We also have the current population survey on behalf of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You probably hear about the unemployment rate mm -hmm. every month in the news. Well, right. we do collect a survey on behalf of the Bureau of Labor Statistics to be able to produce that information that's very important yeah. uh, for our country. Uh, and that survey, it's also every month here in the Bronx. We have other surveys such as the Crime and Victimization Survey on behalf of the Department of Justice. We have a survey on behalf of that we conduct on behalf of the uh, Department of Health. So there's a, a lot going on. We also have some um, surveys that happen maybe every five years. Right now we are conducting the survey of business owners, mm -hmm. and that's every five years. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot going on. So I expect to see us around all the time. Uh, and why, why should people in our community participate in these surveys? Well, while data from the senior census is really important for reapportionment and redistricting, so it has to do with power and money, mm -hmm. right? Um, data from our surveys is what keep us informed of how our communities are changing over, t over time, the trends. Are we getting wealthier, poorer, uh, is our population aging? Um, how is our, our um, um, working patterns changing, people shifting occupations? Uh, so having this data available every year will inform the people really making decisions about where funding should go. Mm -hmm. So if we know there are more kids going to school in the Bronx, yeah. the data is showing that that's a sign for those making decisions about funding the schools and where the money should be going, how much should go. Right. So having an accurate information about this community, it's key to make sure that the fair amount of funding gets here. Right. And that's why it's important to participate. So if we get the accurate information, um, funding will be um, uh, accurate to the needs of the community. Right, so who, it helps with allocation of funds with various levels of government from federal to state to city. All and that. not only government use our data, but you can have school boards using our data. You may have planning commissions. Uh, for instance, if you are uh, writing a, a emergency evacuation plan, you may want to know how many people with disability have in certain areas within the Bronx, mm -hmm. families with children, elderly people living in households, so you can plan uh, your emergency evacuation plan. So it's right. in every level you can use this data. Cool. Uh, what, what is important about, the, about these surveys that the community should know about these activities? Um, First is don't be surprised if you get uh, contacted by the Census Bureau. It's not every 10 years. Mm -hmm. So you may be contacted by mail, mm -hmm. by phone, or a personal visit. It varies depending on the survey you were selected. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that your address was selected, not you as a person. 
and it's random selected. Okay. We have an um, address file and it's a system that um, random select these addresses. Um, know that if a census person contact you, um, well, the question is mailed to you, you have a chance to mail back. Mm -hmm. If not, we'll give you a call and some surveys will call you, depending on how often it takes for that survey to happen. Mm -hmm. And if you have a person visiting your house, um, our uh, employees have a picture ID, a federal picture ID. They have to show to you the picture ID along with some materials about the purpose of their visit. Mm -hmm. And if you're not sure if that is a Census Bureau employee, if that's a legitimate survey, and this is really important, give us a call. And the number is 1800-991-2520. Give us a call. Ask the name of the person. Our, our employees have business cards. Keep a business card. Call our office and verify if that is a legitimate uh, visit. And if it is, um, participation is really important. So... Uh, just make sure you participate. Oh, that's very important for people to know that it's uh, your address was selected, not you as a person. Because I, I understand that some people might get a little jittery depending on their status, you know, their immigration status. If someone just shows up at their door, or what what kind of information they're giving away. On that note, what happens to their information once they give their in to the census person? Every information collected by the Census Bureau is protected by law, mm -hmm. um, and. It's only used for statistical purposes. Okay. Um, we, um, our employees take an oath for life to keep the information confidential. We cannot share with any agency or individual for 72 years. After wow. 72 years, the, the data is collected, then we can release some information for historical research, genealogy, and all that. But for 72 years, it's protected by federal law. And if um, the, there's an unlawful disclosure of this information, mm -hmm. we are under under penalty of $250,000 fine or five years in jail or both. Oh, my. So none of us really want to play mess with that. I wouldn't want to no. mess with that either. No. That's a lot and, of money. <laughs> and not only that, this is such an important information and, and so crucial to have accurate information that making it confidential, it's as we know people participate. So it's important that we keep it confidential so people know it's safe to be part of it and we, in, we are going to be able to produce uh, vital statistics for the community. Uh, earlier you mentioned that the American Community Survey is one of the surveys conducted in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between this kind of survey and the census itself? So with the census in 2010, every person, every house got a questionnaire, was really short, simple questions, 10 questions. And the purpose was to count the population mm -hmm. and for reapportionment, redistricting. What we have with the American Community Survey, it's something that we actually have been done since the first census in, 19, in 1790. Um, we use the opportunity to collect, uh, aside from the basic demographics, some other information that's important for planning and mm -hmm. for understanding our community. It's just we used the decennial, um, since I think 1940, we had a long form add to it to add some extra information aside from the demographic. And when it came to 2005, and it's, it's such a fast change in our society nowadays that we need to collect the information more often than every 10 years. So we got the long form that have been used since 1940, mm -hmm. but anyway, socioeconomic data collected since, since 1790 and turned into the American Community Survey. So that survey used to be the long form every 10 years. But if you're looking at, let's say, medium income from 2000 and you want to use it in 2009, it, kind of, it feels old. Right. And inflation think it just, and everything. Yes, yeah. and how much a community has changed from 2000 to 2010. Mm -hmm. So you need that information up to date for right. planning. Then we started the American Community Survey, and it's a large sample. And uh, the interview is about a 30 minutes interview with every, uh, we include every person in the household. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's important to be accurate so we have a true picture of your community. Um, and the data from the American Community Survey is what you see being used to, to allocate about $400 billion in federal funding. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why uh, it's so important to be uh, accurate. Is it different from the census? Well, you just said that some of these surveys are you're randomly selected by your address, whereas the survey, like the census every 10 years, is given to everyone in every address. Correct. Is the American Community Survey ra also randomly selected, or is everyone going to get it? No, it's random selected. It's a survey, so we have a sample, mm -hmm. about 3.5 million households in the nation, so mm -hmm. it's a pretty large sample. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's going to get that. But since it's conducted every month of every year, mm -hmm. so there are chances we, that you end up in this sample. Okay. And the data is released every year. So, and the beauty of it is um, every year you can see how your community is changing or not changing. So if you uh, learn that you have this percent of population in poverty uh, this year, you can look next year and see if that has changed. Right. And that's kind of important. It's, it's wonderful to see how, how your community has either grown 
or deteriorated and how you, how you can make changes, how the government can make changes, how, who you can go to to make changes to help yes. yourself. Yeah, government nowadays, any government, they're facing really tough decisions on how to provide funding and which programs and services they should invest or keep. So having the data will guide them towards making a better decision, a more informed decision. That's why it's, it's so important. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. We have to take a quick break, but first let's take a look at the premiere of an off-Broadway zombie musical like no other. Yes, Zombies! BronxNet correspondent Rina Valentin has more. <laughs> 